other one is feeding. Look at this, everybody. We managed to find her. Isn't that fantastic? Um, so that looks like Karula and the young male, uh, Hosanna, I believe. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Hosanna. It looks like him. I can't really see. They're lying down in the drainage line. And <laughs> this is playing with the tail. But it's, it's very thick in here. I'm so happy. Just have a look at this, everyone. Look at this drainage line where they are hiding. So she has managed to pull the kill down into this drainage. So out of sight of other predators and vultures or anything like that. And they seem very comfortable. It's also a bit cooler down in this drainage line. So they are very, very happy. Isn't she a beautiful, beautiful leopard? And a successful leopard. I mean, just the other day, we found her in the morning with a, an impala kill. And I'm not sure what she killed uh, today. I believe it was also an impala, I think. And so she has done very, very well for herself. That is great. And to raise two cubs is not easy at all. And leopards are not always successful with raising their cubs. But she has done a fantastic job. And I hope all of you are as excited as I am. It sounds like from all the comments coming through, everybody's also enjoying this. And I'm so happy. And the nice thing is, because it's quite a thick area, I think we're the only, well, we are the only ones here at the moment, which is wonderful. And and you'll see shortly just where we've parked the vehicle. We're at uh, a bit of an angle at the moment. You can see... Uh, Really have parked ourselves just before the, the edge of this drainage line, or just on the edge of this drainage line, just so that we could get a view. And uh, we managed to spot her movement, just the flick of a tail earlier, which was really, really lucky. And l fortunately for us, we have David on camera and that zoom, so we can give you the best possible view. Oh, here comes the other one, everyone. Just off to the left. There we go. The other cub. And let's see. That's probably... That is the young female. Uh, Osana and... Oh, how is... Kongile? Shongile. Thank you. I, the, my pronunciation is terrible. Shongile. And also, with traveling to so many different areas and getting to know different leopards... Often the names, I get confused with some of the names. Oh, wonderful. I am really, really so happy. I could easily sit here all afternoon and we may just do that. We'll pro probably drive around a little bit um, in a while, but for now we are going to sit with these leopards and see what they get up to. Seems to be a bit of movement. I'm just not sure where the kill is, everyone. I can't see it. It's possibly just, it's just been hidden, I'm sure, at the base of one of these trees down in this little drainage line. It would be wonderful if she decides to hoist it somewhere, out of reach of other predators, such as hyena especially. If a hyena pick up on the scent of the, of the leopards in the area or the kill, they'll most definitely come and, and try and steal this kill from them. Paul wants to know why didn't she bring the or take the kill up into a tree? So, Paul, that, that is a good question. The thing is with leopards is they prefer feeding on the ground, and the reason for that is it's a bit more comfortable for them. It's easier for them to take turns feeding; they don't have to climb in and out of a tree every time. So it is a bit easier and more comfortable for them to be lying on the ground and just walk over and feed when they are hungry. The other thing, Paul, is I'm assuming she possibly killed this maybe late last night or early this morning. So 
what she what she has done is put it into a position where they can feed on it a little bit and probably make it a bit lighter because you can imagine these impalas are very heavy um, to hoist into trees and even though the leopard are very powerful it is still heavy and it's not easy to hoist a kill into a tree so often what they'll do is they'll feed on it a little bit and uh, oh look at those two cubs playing so they'll feed on the kill, make it a bit lighter, possibly take out some of the stomach contents and then decide to hoist it a little bit later, probably before the other predators start becoming really active like hyena and lions. So she may still hoist it a bit later this evening, not too sure. Emma, you think that Karula is an incredible leopard, and you say she really is something else. And um, I, I mean, I don't, or I unfortunately haven't had the opportunity to view her a lot, but I did see her the last time I was here in June, and I've seen her twice now. This is the second time I've seen her, and these cubs are. are looking in such good condition she's done so well to look after them and raise them and she's clearly a very success successful hunter so emma i would have to agree with you just from what i've seen she is an incredible leopard very successful very very good hunter and it looks like she has done incredibly well for herself which is lovely to see Debbie, you wanted to know if a Shongile is actually small for her age, or is that just how, or the size difference between the females and the males, is that the, the actual size difference between the two of them? Debbie, 100%. Um, Shongile is probably uh, the correct size for a young female cub at that age, and Hosanna is the right size for a young male. We need to remember that males will be twice the size of females, Debbie. So if you think of a female, she's probably weighing around 30 to 40 kilograms, um, and I'm referring to Karula, an adult. So Karula's probably between 30 and 40 kilograms. And oh, what what is that? How many pounds is that? Um, I'm terrible with the conversions, everyone. I do apologize. I'm not good with the conversions. So... So call it, uh, say about 80 pounds, probably. Uh, 70 to 80 pounds, I would say. Um, whereas a male leopard is around 80, well, 70 to 80 kilograms. So double the size of a female. You can imagine from a young age, you will start seeing that size difference very, very easily as they grow up. So a male leopard, 70 to 80 kilograms, that's about 150 pounds, 160 pounds, somewhere around there. If not more, 170, 170 pounds. So they are big, powerful animals, powerful cats, very powerful cats. But Debbie, that young female, Shongile is, that I, I would say she's the perfect size for a cub that age. It's very peaceful in this drainage line at the moment. It's nice and cool, but there's a lot of birds calling around us. I can hear some chin spot battises chattering away, not giving the normal call that they give. That So they're not doing that. They give off a little bit of a rattle almost. And I cannot mimic that sound. It's very difficult. But I can hear some of them flying around. So there's a lot of bird activity throughout this drainage line. And you'll probably pick up on some sounds around us. <laughs> so.
So I understand James Henry wanted me to do the Steelings Ren Warbler call again for you this afternoon. <laughs> James, um, he really has dropped me <laughs> again. Typical James. <laughs> Steelings Ren Warbler is a beautiful little bird. And unfortunately, we haven't seen one yet. So it's always nice to do the call when we do see one, but they are difficult to see. Let me try to find it for you quickly first, and then I'll work on my on my call. But look at those. Let's just keep watching. You see those leopards are very comfortable down there. They're not in any hurry to move. Look at this everyone, this is quite interesting. Something is walking down to the edge of the drainage line and we'll probably try to see this Franklin just off to the left. Hey Dave, can you see it? Yeah. Just going down there. That is a crested Franklin, a crested spur fowl. Now listen to that sound, can you hear that everyone? Now that is a Franklin alarm call. So that little Franklin has spotted the leopards and it is not happy. So it is alarm calling. But look, it's walking right down, wants to have a good look. See what these leopards are doing. <laughs> look, look, see that little panic run there? It's crossing through the drainage line. And off it goes. <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? Mm. That was really, really nice to see. But do you notice the alarm called? So it was basically saying to the leopards, I've seen you. Um, I'm alarm calling so that you have no element of surprise um, against me. And I'm going to pass through this drainage line and move away from here. So the leopards know they've been seen because occasionally, especially with these little cubs, these little cubs will hunt Franklins. And I have seen it before where they're learning to hunt and they'll stalk Franklins or mongoose, all these small little creatures which wander through the, the, the dense scrub. And these young leopards will try and hunt them and that's how they learn. So it's a good practice for them. Emma, you have asked us, will the cubs move off instinctively when they reach a certain age? Or will Karula, the female, will she become a bit aggressive towards the cubs? So what usually happens is with the, with the young cubs, once they reach, and it depends, it's anywhere from a year to a year and a half. And that's when they start becoming independent. And the female will start leaving them for a lot longer and basically allow them to explore parts of her territory a little bit. She will still go and feed them. I have seen young young leopards stay with their female for up to two years, just over two years, which is unusual. And generally, the average is a year and a half. But what happens is she does become somewhat aggressive towards them. She'll start hissing and growling and showing the cubs that she's becoming a bit agitated with them. So what will happen with the young female, so Shungile, what she will do is um, she will take up a portion of Karula's uh, territory. So the female leopards allow the cubs to have a section of their territory that they have set up for themselves. She will then have to try and extend that in the, in the opposite direction, obviously. She will have to try and extend that territory slowly but surely and make it a bit bigger. What will happen to little Corsana, the young male, he will be pushed out and most likely, for one, his mother will start showing him signs of aggression, um, hissing. Oh, hang on, there's a cuckoo, everybody. I just flew. 
Wow, Valerie all the way from Massachusetts. Thank you for your comment and saying how successful Karula has been with raising cubs. And uh, this is number eight and nine for her. These two, Shungile and Hosanna, which is incredible. So she's raised seven cubs already in her lifetime. So she really is a very successful female. That is incredible. That really is wonderful. And um, just getting back to what I was saying earlier, just before that cuckoo flew into, into, our, into our sighting. Um, so young, of course, Hosanna will, uh, what will happen is she will growl at him, chase and probably push him out. And then usually what happens is there will be a dominant male around, could be his father, could be in other males, and they will make sure that he moves off. And what happens is they become nomadic for a period of time where they have to go and look for a territory that is not occupied by a big male leopard. And they'll move around for occasionally, it can be a few years, until they become big, strong, and dominant. And then they will start setting up territory for themselves and, um, and probably protect it against any other, other leopards. So it's interesting. The male gets kicked out, but then a female, a portion of her territory will will get left for the for the young female. Paul <laughs> Paul wanted me to demonstrate the spotted cuckoo's call and Paul I actually don't know it very well um, because I've uh, I've hardly seen that bird so what I'll do is I'm just going to use my app here everyone and if you want to have a look I've got my bird app and there's a beautiful picture of that great spotted cuckoo and what I can do now is I can play the call for you Do you hear that? And I don't think I could try and make that call. Do you hear that? Interesting. So quite a chattering call. Um, and I, oops, sorry, that's not good. <laughs> um, and I heard that chattering, but <laughs> I heard that chattering, and I knew that was something different. I, I did recognise it as a cuckoo. But um, but I, it was not one that I've seen regularly, so it was really, really great to see. Oh, we are off to a great start, everyone. Um, much better than yesterday. <laughs> I have to apologize for yesterday. I think uh, my brain was a bit fried. We had a good chuckle when I reached when I got back to the to um, the DRC. Everybody mocked me for a short while, which I completely deserved. <laughs> but this is a great start. Anyway, we're going to sit with Karula and her two beautiful cubs for a little bit longer. Let's head over to Taylor and get an update from her. We have still got Karula and the two little ones and they have not moved everyone. They've settled down quite nicely over there and they seem very, very comfortable. Oh, beautiful. And, I mean, even sitting here from where we are, luckily we've got the camera, as I said, but they, they're almost invisible in this dappled light from where we are, from where we're sitting. It's very tricky to see them. You can just see the pattern of these beautiful cats lying under the, under the shrubs or under those trees. Breathing quite heavily, full-bellied. I still don't have any sign of the kill everyone i think it's just off to the to the left of where we are on the left hand side of this drainage line but we can't see in there and i think that's possibly where the kill is Uh, 
Uh, Laura, thank you very much for your comment. You said it was a, a daker or a diker that they killed this morning. So thank you. I wasn't aware what anim, or what uh, antelope it was. So it was a little diker, which is not a large animal for these three leopards to feed on. Uh, Laura, you wanted to know if perhaps they finished it. There is a possibility. I, I mean, the only thing that I can think, though, is I saw little Shongile move from the left hand side of this drainage line to uh, the um, to Karula and her brother and it looked like she was moving around a bit there so there's possibly still a little bit left uh, just that's hidden in that drainage line that we can't see so there might still be a little bit left uh, you know it all depends how hungry these leopards are or were rather but Laura, you're 100% right in thinking that there could be a possibility that they finished it. I do think though maybe that a diker would have or would would have kept them going for a while uh, feeding wise. I think there's still some left somewhere around there. And we may see them moving later on and possibly get to see them feeding on more. Is the Diedrich's cuckoo again? It's calling. Can you hear that, everyone? Is that it flying above us? No, can't be. Oh, it was indeed. It was flying above us. Very, very difficult to see everyone. It was just flying, and especially in this cloud cover, it's not easy to to show you the Diedrich's cuckoo. That wonderful call it Dee Dee Diedrich Dee Dee Diedrich <laughs> Yes and Stephen you asked about the st <laughs> Stellings Stellings Ren Warbler um, <laughs> James yeah, James James dropped me a little bit and said I need to do the call for you again. I think he found that little video of my calls quite amusing. And the Stealings Ren Warbler, I always describe it as a, it sounds like a galloping horse. It sounds like it's going and that's a Stealings Ren Warbler. I think that's uh, that's, that's cool. Um, I keep just hearing the voices in my head, or rather the ladies in final control saying I'm getting a an A or a B for effort, and so not really for the call. <laughs> uh, anyway. Everyone, I think what we're going to do is we're going to move on from here. These leopards are very comfortable and at the moment and they seem to be resting. Uh, don't think they're going to move anytime soon. Let's move out and, uh, and stick with us a little bit. Let's see what else we can find. I can actually hear some birds alarm calling behind us. Maybe there's something in the trees and then we can always come back later and see what these leopards are up to. All right, let's do that. Let me just try and maneuver ourselves out of here. Oh, back here everyone and Karula, we just caught a, the last glimpse of her coming down the tree actually. Um, she took she took the kill up into a very very thick tree, one of the cubs and over there as Dave's showing you now she's hidden the kill up there so there was still quite a lot of dacre left and one of the cubs is up there at the moment. I couldn't see which one looked like the young male, Hosanna. And she's moving off now through the thicket. I don't know where she's going. It's very, it's very thick, everyone, and quite tricky. Let's see. She's possibly just trying to cover the scent of where that kill was. Um, I saw her walk past now and dig some sand over a little piece of meat that was lying there. And she does that specifically to mask the scent of the kill. So hopefully no predators come and bother them, like hyena. Oh, where are you going now? Oh, 
Let's just have a good look here. But I heard you had such a wonderful sighting with those lions, which is fantastic. Um, let me just have a look. He's still moving around through there, everyone. I can just see the tail flicking now and then. She may come back. Uh, let's just see. Yeah, she's moving around a little bit. It's not easy to see her. Um, yeah, have you got her there, Dave? Uh, it's a bit tricky. Okay, I'll tell you what, everyone. Let's take a chance here. Yeah? Yeah. Whatever you do... Oh, here we go. Here's a little little cub. I think this is a little female. No, that's Hosanna. That's a young male. That's him. He's just moved through there. Okay. Tina, you want to know how old will these cubs be when they leave their mother? Tina, they'll be roughly, on average, it's about a year and a half, and then they become independent and they get pushed out. Okay, everyone, I'm going to try and move the vehicle down into this drainage line. I'm not sure. This could get quite interesting. Whatever you do, don't tell Graham or Steph or anyone what I'm doing. There we go. Can't see the other one. I wonder if that little male didn't sneak down while we were trying to find his mother. Uh, this is going to be tricky too. There we go. some branches here now everyone I don't think I can go further unfortunately here it goes it looks like Karula can hear a lot of flies lot of flies around the stomach content I think that was hidden under the bush over here um, but let's just have a look isn't that beautiful look at her so we're down in the drainage line now not sure if we're going to get out but at least we've got a beautiful view of the leopard and Dave and I have got one bottle of water to share in case we have to spend the night here <laughs> uh, lovely And yes, we also have a blanket that we can share if we get cold. <laughs> you can see one of the cubs in, in that little hole. Just the ears sticking out. Elizabeth, you say Steph sitting in FC shaking his head in disapproval. Well, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission. And we've got the one other little cub in the tree. Um, oh, it's dropped the kill. That's what it's done. And just above it, I think you might see the little cub. Uh, there, there we go. Straight in the center, Dave. A little bit left. There we go. And this, I think, is the little female Shungile. Let's just double check. But it, it did look like Hosanna that followed his mother and Shungile went up to where the kill was. Let's see. She might go back to where that little Daka had fallen, which is over there. Let's see if she comes into our frame. Look at all those flies around it. Isn't that amazing? Oh, wow. But I'm sure these flies, and it happened the other day too. It was funny, we were watching, I think it was the lions that had a kill. And there were flies all over it. And all of a sudden, 
and it started to get a bit darker and they disappeared completely. Oh, she, oh wow, look here, there's one right next to us, everyone. Well spotted, Dave. This is little Hosanna, the male, I think. Let's double check. I think so, because he must have heard his sister drop the kill. So he's come to inspect, to see what's going on. Wow, everyone, this, this little cub is probably four meters, five meters from the vehicle. Michael, you wanted to know is the only difference between the male and female leopards their size. And yes, uh, just from first glance, if you have a look, the size is a major difference. Um, the males do get thicker necks and slightly bigger heads and often a big dewlap under the throat. Uh, whereas females won't necessarily get that or not as big and as prominent. And then if you, um, if you do look very careful, oh, look at that. That is incredible, everyone. How beautiful is this, this cub? And if you do look carefully, if the male's walking around, you'll be able to see the scrotum under the tail. So then you can tell that it's definitely a male, but usually just by the sheer size. The males are much bigger, double the size of the females. Oh, look at that. I can't tell you how special this is, everyone, because in most parts of Africa, leopards, leopards, or generally all over the world in various, on various continents, leopards are very elusive and they are very, very shy. They will only, you will only see them if they want to be seen. And I've been very fortunate. I've had probably, I think, seven years experience of working in in areas probably the top leopard viewing in Africa in my opinion and just from following them and tracking them and viewing them I've learned so much about their behavior and they very are they really are very very special cats and I still get very excited when I, when we do find them or when I do find leopards and to be able to sit and spend time with them because I know how hard it is to find them and when you have sightings like this it is so special and it, it really is something that should not be taken for granted. I cannot stress that enough. You can see the flies bothering this leopard a little bit around the ears. They are sitting on the ears. seems to have become fairly quiet. All the bird calls around us, just some Franklins and um, and a bleating warbler I can hear and some you know, the Franklins again but everything else seems to be fairly still and I can hear the buzz of the flies around and these leopards look how they're watching us. All this young male Gee, this is an incredible sighting. And for what, what I find so special is that this young male trusts us enough. He knows that we are no danger, we are no threat, and he's happy to sit close by and just stare at us. He's watching his sister moving around. I can't see where she is now. She's behind us somewhere. Um, and the mother is still off ahead of us. I think let's stay with this little male focusing on him because he's in a perfect position so close to us. And look at that pure white under the, under the legs and under the belly. from British Columbia. Oh dear Dave, how are we gonna, gonna shame he's right behind us everyone. 
Um, let me just see. Sorry, and he'll get to your question now. Just want to see if I can move. Yeah, you know what? This little male has gone and laid down right behind us. I, I don't want to disturb him. I'm not going to move the vehicle. Um, he's comfortable. And if he's comfortable, I'm happy. And we've still got the female straight ahead that we can focus on. So, Annie, you wanted to know how dangerous is it for a young male leopard who becomes nomadic when he's looking for territory? Um, it, 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 can be, it can be quite a tricky time, Annie. And you asked if there's a statistic. I don't know of an exact statistic um, of, of survival for these young males. Hang on. I just heard something. I think the... Female is with the kill. Is she pulling it? Yeah, there she is. Is she trying to take it up into the tree? She is, isn't she? Look at that, everyone. <laughs> and th this is all a learning curve for them. She is now trying to learn how to hoist. And that young Daker is perfect for her because it's not as heavy as an Impala. And they have fed on quite a bit of it, so it's probably much lighter than than a full meal. And it's nice practice for her. So, Annie, in my experience, um, from what I have seen, young male leopards, when they do become nomadic, it, it is tricky because they will bump into other leopards on a regular basis. Oh, wow, look there. There we go. Look at that, and she's still got the kill. So, Annie, um, I've seen them, how young males have, have come into contact with other males and got seriously beaten quite badly because the males do act aggressively against one another if they are uh, fighting for territory. But it's not often the case, and I'll tell you why. Leopards, because leopards are solitary animals. The only time you see leopards together is in a situation like this where the female has got cubs or if a male and female are mating. So what happens, because they are solitary animals, they do not like to get into conflict um, or, in, or into any confrontation because if they get injured or badly wounded, they cannot hunt for themselves. So what happens is usually the males, even uh, the dominant males mainly, they will, uh, they will scent mark, and they growl and they bare their teeth and they salivate and they walk up and down next to each other in a line. They just walk up and down basically on the edge of the territory and it's a standoff. It's to try and show that they're bigger, stronger and, and more dominant than the other one. And hopefully that will push the other male off. However, at times they may turn and fight one another. So in terms of the young males doing that, it doesn't really happen because they are not big enough or strong enough to take on an adult male. So they'll move off. But Annie, when they reach that year and a half mark to two years, they generally are far better equipped to deal with danger and, um, and survival. So usually they do make it to uh, maturity. But the thing is they do still have to be careful and it's not easy. They do get chased out of areas regularly and often and I have seen leopards move com completely off a game reserve into the neighboring property to try and set up ter territory there because the competition is too much where, where they are. So there are a number of factors but, uh, but for now um, or for the meantime when they do get pushed off they usually, they usually are okay but I'm not sure if there's an exact statistic. It's an interesting question. And again, it's very difficult to give an exact answer because there isn't an exact answer. And I have viewed leopards long enough that I can tell you that their behavior changes on a regular basis. And it doesn't matter what books you read and how much research you've done, you will always see something different. I've mentioned a few incidents to researchers and they've said they've never heard of that before. So... It does change, and they are wild animals. It all depends on the situation, the territory, on the particular animal. And so there's no, there's no exact right or wrong answer.
So Bill in Tennessee wants to know if, say, our young male leopard, Hosanna, reaches adulthood and he then becomes big, strong and dominant, would he potentially take over the territory of the dominant leopard here? Uh, Bill, there is a possibility, there is a chance. And maybe you can help me, um, the viewers. I'm not sure who the father of these cubs are. And if you can let me know, that would be great. Because I'm not sure if he's still around. I haven't seen a dominant male leopard since I've been back. Look how agile that little cub is. Isn't that amazing? So, Bill, there is a possibility that a young male could come in and try to take over the dominant male leopard territory that is around here. It's unlikely that it'll take over its father's territory. Usually the father will push it off. <laughs> They're both there just behind that bar. I do apologize, everyone, but as I said, they are right behind us, and I don't want to disturb them. And if I do start up the vehicle or try and move it, then we, we may startle them a little bit, and I don't want that. So let's just sit tight. They are moving around a little bit, and I'm sure they'll move again very very shortly. The female is still lying over there, straight ahead, just on the edge of the drainage line. You can see her. There she is. Okay, so we've just got a comment from Gremlins General and you say Tingana <coughs> excuse me, is believed to be the father. Okay, so if Tingana is around and this male returns into the area, the chances are the, the father will, will push them out or push that male out. However, and again, this just shows, only, I only know this because I've seen it. I've seen male leopards tolerate their, their offspring and their young males within their territory. And I've even seen a father and, a, and, a, and his offspring, a young male, mating with the same female at the same time. And I've seen the male leopards feeding almost at the same time, sharing a kill. And that behavior, I promise you, is something that is not written down. I've never read it and if I hadn't seen it for myself I probably wouldn't have believed it. So it just shows you that the fathers will probably tolerate their offspring a little bit more than than we than we would think. However, it's unlikely that that young male will take over the male's territory unless that father um, eventually passes away or dies. And if that male dies then then I think that young male would probably take over the territory if he is big enough and strong enough. And again, Bill, I'm saying this just as what I think, and it's a theory, and from behavior that I've seen, I'm basing my answer. It's not to say that that is definitely the case, and because these animals do do what they want at times, and we I'm never really, really sure. Anyway, I'm going to sit with these leopards for a little bit longer. I don't have a choice. We are in the middle of the drainage, surrounded by them. Let's head back to Taylor and see what she's up to with the lions. So now we, it looks like the little female, again, we couldn't really see. They swapped around quite quickly. I think this is the little female. Um, she's lying behind us now, and we managed to take the camera off the mount and Dave has put it on the back of the vehicle so that we can show it to you. See we make a plan out here everyone. We are still stuck in the drainage line. I'm not going to spend too much more time with these leopards. It is getting a bit dark and I don't want to attract any attention. Ah, and as I say that she moves off so we won't disturb her when I move. Shongile, is that correct, Dave? Shongile, okay. Just going to move the camera back, everyone. Let's see if we can. <laughs> Just going to do that for now. <laughs> um, and that's nice, a different angle. <laughs> um, it's uh, which is nice. Uh, what a wonderful sighting, everyone. I'm so glad you got to sit and enjoy it with us and enjoy these leopards. It really was special. Um, Karula has not moved. She's still up on the bank. And isn't it wonderful how comfortable she is with us being here, even close to the cubs, while she has moved off? We are going to move out now. It's getting dark. I don't want to disturb them during the evening or 
or um, attract any attention of other predators. So while I try and navigate out of here, let's head back to Taylor and see if she's managed to find any of those allates.